the dampener speeds page is a way for us to understand what the dampeners are doing. They give us a good indication of um, how are the, the pistons moving into the dampener and out of the dampener, what the speeds are that we're seeing um, with that velocity of that piston, and then also getting a good awareness of where we're at in the track. So if we look at this page, there's four graphs here. In the top two, these are the travel of the dampener. Um, piston so it moves into compression or rebound we're going to see that displacement on these top two graphs the third graph down here is the speed graph what this graph is telling us is gives us a little bit of a situational awareness helps us understand what kind of turns we're at the low speed high speed are we on a straight are we in a braking zone just gives us a little bit of understanding when we're looking at the data and this bottom graph down here is the dampener speed so like the top two graphs, this is telling us how that piston is moving in and out of the dampener, but it's telling us the velocities that we're looking at. And this is a really important concept because when we're talking about dampeners, um, we know that dampeners apply a force when there's a velocity. So these dampener speeds will tell us kind of, you know, are we in the low speed region? Are we in the high speed region, that dampener? So let's look at the top two graphs. Again, these are the dampener travel graphs. And you can see there's a red and a blue line on each one. Um, that's just telling us what the inside and outside tire is. So when we're looking through the dampener travel graph here, uh, there's some things that we want to be on the lookout for. So here doing the straight, um, where we're on the straight, where we're accelerating before we're on the braking zone, you can see there's some oscillations here. If these had, you know, the, the distance between the peaks from like at this point and at this point were really, really close to one another, meaning it was very high frequencies, it might mean I need a little bit more overall dampening, right? I maybe don't want to increase just the bump or just the rebound, but I just need more levels of dampening. Um, so it's a good indication of, you know, kind of what's going on. We Again, we, we're trying to re reduce those oscillations, trying to keep that arrow, um, the chassis stable for the arrow. You can see as we get on the brake here, I'm on the brakes because the, the velocity starts to decrease here. That's why we have the speed trace here. You can see the front lines come up. Then that's because it's compressing as the front dives down, the front suspension is going to compress and the, the rear axle goes down because it's um, re rebounding, extending, it's lifting up, right? So understanding the how the car and these lines change based on that, what kind of behavior the car is put into is really important. And in this, um, in this, we're looking at ACC, but it might be slightly different for whatever game you're looking at, but just having a good understanding of what the direction actually signifies. So in this um, example, um, moving towards the top means compression and moving down means rebound. And you can see um, when we're going to this turn, the front moves up, the, the rear moves down, but it's pretty you know flat through this portion. So I know it's not very bumpy. And this is turn one at Silverstone, so it's cops and it's pretty smooth through that turn. Um, you can see these lines start to kind of deviate here and the reason why is as we move to the corner the outside tire is going to compress more and the inside tire is going to rebound right so it's going to start to move downwards and same thing on the rear so you can see this is kind of where we're moving to the corner so this is kind of that transient state and again it's pretty smooth these things are increasing but pretty smoothly there's no like you know bumps or oscillations in this data and you can see at some point they're going to start to kind of level off. So you can see this blue line is pretty flat. Same on the the the, bot, the rear axle. The front's got a little bit of bumps here, but it's not too bad. And that's a good indication of this is when we're at steady state. So in this region, the dampeners aren't going to really do very much because there's not a lot of travel there, right? The velocity is really, really low. So here I wouldn't really want to make a dampener adjustment because the dampeners aren't really doing too much in this region. But if we look through here... You can see this is the apex of COPS where I'm getting on the curb. And you can see there's definitely some oscillations here um, in this red line. And that's, again, that curve. So it's good, giving us a good indication that we're on the curbs. So, you know, typically mid-corner, we're not going to adjust the dampeners. We're going to mostly affect the springs, the ride heights, the ARBs. But in this case, because I'm hitting a curb, I'm going into kind of a transient state mid-corner, which means I could make a dampener adjustment here and I would see an effect. And one thing to note, too, is it kind of helps us understand how the load is distributed. You can see the inside tire, this blue line, the oscillations here, the peaks are, you know, the magnitude is not that, um, not as big as the red line, right? So I know a dampener adjustment on this out tire is going to make much more of a difference in the inside tire. These loaded tires are going to make a, a much bigger difference. So again, you can use these dampener travels to kind of get a good indication of what's going on um, through the corner. 
Um, again, if we look at this right here, you can see some of those oscillations here. These are just caused by road imperfections. Um, we could be a good case for increasing overall dampening um, if we thought it was causing a problem. So again, the speed is just to help us get a good indication of where we're at. So for turn one, we looked at where we were getting on the braking zone. It can also help us understand where we're at on steady state. So you can see this is the minimum speed here. And uh, this is kind of where I'm getting on that curb. Um, so again, this is kind of giving me some good situational awareness. So let's look at the bottom graph. The bottom graph is a dampener speed. So again, this is telling us how that piston is moving in and out of the dampener. But the difference here is when we're making a dampener adjustment, we know that a dampener is going to apply a force when there's the presence of a velocity. So we don't really care, you know, what the displacement is. We just care how quickly we get to the, uh, we realize that displacement. And a lot of times, as you know, the dampener has two operating ranges. We have a low speed range region and a high speed region. And typically in that low speed region, we want really stiff dampeners because it helps us um, with the load transfer to realize it much quicker so the car feels responsive. But at you know, high speed velocities, when we're going over things like curves, we, we want the, the suspension to be very compliant. We want it to absorb those. We don't want it to be very stiff um, where it'll unsettle the car. So before I make any dampener adjustment, you know, if I'm going to make a, a high speed adjustment or a low speed adjustment, I want to come to these dampener speeds at the bottom graph here to see what kind of speeds am I looking at for this part of the corner. So you can see, let's go back to turn one. You can see um, when I hit on this curb, the, the velocities really kick up here on the dampener. So you can see we go into compression, rebound, compression, rebound, compression. And uh, you know that it's compression because it's if it's going positive, it's uh, compression. If it's going negative, it's rebound. But you can see um, when I hit that curb here in the travel, these velocities, they're going up to like 400 or negative 400. So these are definitely high speed regions. So I definitely, if I was going to change the behavior here, I'd probably make a high speed dampener adjustment. One thing to note too is let's say I was going to uh, affect, remember this is that corner entry where these lines are starting to deviate. It's not steady state yet. The, the lines are still changing. So I know it's transient, but maybe I had an issue here and I wanted to resolve it. Well, I might want to do dampener adjustment, right? Dampeners are really good for changing the transient behavior. But how do I know if I want low speed or high speed? Again, I'm going to come to this dampener speed graph. And let's look at what kind of velocities we're looking at. So if I zoom in here, you can see right around 100, but most of the time 50 to negative 50. So these are low speeds. Anything below 50 millimeters per second is typically going to be a low speed region. Anything above that is going to be a high speed region. So here I wouldn't want to make a high speed adjustment because the velocities are never getting into that high speed region of the dampener. They're always staying in that low speed section. So here I definitely could make a low speed dampener adjustment and I would see a, a, a difference here in how this car feels going through this corner. So again, a dampener speed graph here at the bottom is just a really good way to get a good understanding of what kind of velocities am I at and then helps us understand, um, you know, where, um, you know, are we going to be in the low speed region or the high speed region? One thing that I also forgot to mention are the car parameters for this graph, this, these pages. The dampener speed graphs do not require any uh, car parameters. They're just raw data out of the game. So if you don't want to fill out the car parameters and you just want to come in here and um, use these graphs, you don't have to. You can, you can totally just use these graphs without filling any car parameters and you can know that the data is correct. But that's the dampener speed graphs, guys. I hope you find it useful. If you have any questions, please let us know in the Discord. Until then, I'll catch you guys later.